Oh, hey there. Hey. I'm here to interview your daughter. Oh, please, come in. She's okay. ready in the room. All right, let's do it. I didn't mean to interrupt your practicing. It's all good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. Send me your questions. I'm so excited to see you. I've watched so many of these videos. I can't believe you're here. And this I've is watched, so cool. I've watched so many of your videos. Oh, thanks. This is actually happening. All right, let's this do it. This is happening. Okay. Uh, so what do you play right now? Oh, I was just playing some just kind of, just some chord progression to see if I can come up with any, uh, you know, cute little song idea. It's the next hit. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really come up with anything good, but... <laughs> okay. Do you have to be in a certain mood to write? I think there just have to, has to be some kind of inner storm. you got to be feeling something. <laughs> and what is the writing process like? Um, well, I usually have my laptop here, and mm. I'll just kind of, like, write a lyric. Let's say I was like, uh, your lips are like pink flowers. And I would write, your lips are like pink flowers, lyrics. And then I would kind of... I'll find, like, all my lyrics, because they're all saved under the lyrics oh, cool, tag. Cool, cool. And so then I just have... A bunch of a bunch of those ideas on my laptop. Wow, going digitized. Going digitized, and then I just kind of try and find a some chord progression that sounds like what I'm trying cool. to say. How do you know when a song is finished? You just know. It's like falling in love. You just know when you love that person. You know, it's like mm. you can feel when the puzzles fit together and it's perfect, and you've captured everything. You've captured, you've painted everything like a you know like a mm. perfect picture, and and then you can tell when it's off, and you need to work more on it. Do you get more attached to some songs over others? Absolutely. Which ones? Uh, on my last album, First Man. Ooh. Yeah. Now, based on your tour and your latest album, Romance, you've been thinking a lot about romance. Is that right? I've always been thinking a lot about romance. Uh. I'm def definitely a hopeless romantic. I love love. Do you think you have to be in love to write good love songs? Um, not necessarily, but I think when you're in love, the detail that you get in the songs is, is just, you can't, nobody can make that up in their imagination, you know? The way mm. the person's shirt smelled, the expression on their face, you know, the, the way the sky looked that night. It's like those details have to come from real life. Now, speaking of romance, what's the most romantic trait that a guy can have? Um, kindness. I'm a sucker for just a kind, good man. And what's the most romantic thing that has ever been done for you? <gasps> A lady never tells. Oh, you got away from that one. <laughs> so, Camila, obviously your songs are so personal. Yeah. Um, what's the most meaningful song? Ooh, um, I definitely First Man, because it's a song I wrote about my dad, and I remember just crying, writing it, picturing his face the whole day. <laughs> and speaking of that song, I saw your performance at the Grammys. Oh. You killed it. Thanks. And it was so special to see you sing to your dad like that. Thanks, it felt um, really special. Did he have any idea you were going to do that? He didn't know until the day before. Oh. And he was so nervous. We did the red carpet together, and he was, like, literally slapping himself in the face, like, taking deep breaths. I've, my dad is, like, <laughs> he is not like that. So I was, like, I couldn't believe it. I was, so like, sweet. oh, my God. He was, he was so nervous. My mom and dad are both really camera shy, so I'm surprised my mom is doing this today. How, I, <laughs> how nervous were you before singing to him? I get so nervous before every award show. I get so nervous that after every performance, I get acid reflux so bad that I can't stand up. But oh, honestly, yeah. when I saw him sitting there, I was, like, oh, man... Nothing else here really matters but me telling my dad how much I love him in front of everybody. Like, I just, this is about him. This isn't even about me or the Grammys or anything, you know? Okay, Camila, why don't you tell us why we're uh, here in the English countryside? Tell the audience. Do you want to know? I am doing a musical remake of Cinderella. Yes, Do you, you actually want to go out there because it's really Let's beautiful? Go. Okay. Hey, so you're Cinderella. <laughs> Clearly you're excited. How are you enjoying this? <gasps> I'm, a, I'm honestly in love with it. I'm like, I've fallen in love with it. Anybody that knows me knows my absolute dream is to, you know, have to do, have to, you know, make an inspiration playlist full of Disney songs to get ready for work. <laughs> I mean, how amazing is that? I want to live in that world all the time. Well, now that you're living in this world, can you give me your best British accent? Ooh, ooh, uh, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, I feel like British people would say it's rubbish, but I think I've watched maybe enough Harry Potter to maybe slightly get away with it. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless of what the Brits say, I think that sounded amazing. Uh, uh, thank you. Good thing I'm not doing a British accent in the movie, otherwise <laughs> I would get in trouble. <laughs> Camilla, can you tell me something about you that people do not know? Ooh, I can tell you three things. I don't know why I'm still speaking of British okay. accent. Um, uh, okay, okay um, I actually eat a banana with every single meal. It huh. doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's pasta, a sandwich, rice and beans, scrambled eggs, pancakes, pizza. Eat bananas with everything. Uh, I can only sleep with socks on mm -hmm. because I feel like the boogeyman will lick my feet, if not. And um, I, 
I had a tick in the third grade where I couldn't stop flaring my nostrils. And that I have never confessed publicly before. Well, I haven't noticed, don't worry. Oh, well, I don't do it anymore. Okay, I, can you I tell me something so uh, not about you that a lot of people don't know? Ooh, I learned this today. Um, horses sleep standing up. Oh, that is so interesting. Crazy, okay. right? Uh, let's go outside. Let's go out there, after you. Thank you. What's your uh, go-to drink order? Uh, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Either. Tequila, um, alcoholically, mm -hmm. and uh, non-alcoholic, uh, honestly, water and sometimes, sometimes lemonade. All right. I'm feeling crazy. Okay. Go to dessert order. Uh, chocolate, cake, anything. Chocolate. Podcast or audiobooks? Uh, audiobooks. Instagram or TikTok? TikTok, because there's really funny videos on there. Who's your music icon? Um, uh, Madonna, Michael Jackson, Prince, you know, the undeniable obvious ones. Do you remember the first song you memorized all the lyrics to? Uh, Cinderella by the Cheetah Girls. And who would you say were your earliest inspirations? Um, I was a huge Disney Channel fan. So, you know, when we got cable TV, after we didn't have cable TV, I was like, Disney Channel's the greatest thing ever in the entire world, which it is and was. But, you know, Cheetah Girls, High School Musical, Hannah Montana is really the, the reason that I'm here. I was, like, I was like in my own Disney Channel movie in my bathroom all the time. <laughs> we are getting super countryside with bucolic ponds. It's really beautiful, right? I, that, that plant is not real. I wish it was. I got <laughs> here and I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm in Pandora in Avatar. Uh, but it is beautiful, right? It is. Uh, when did you know that you wanted to be a performer? Honestly, the day that I auditioned for X Factor. Because before yeah. that, that was the first time I ever really performed in front of a large group of people. I was so shy. I didn't even perform huh. in front of my family before then. And that was the first time I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, I can do this without passing out. It didn't seem like that was your first time. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is the hardest part about performing to a live audience? Um, working through nerves and making nerves your friend and making yeah. them, turning them into fuel has been something that I've really learned to do the past few years because I, I definitely, like I told you, I, I still get super, super nervous because I, I care so, so much about sure. it. So like really getting that under control. How does the vibe of an audience affect your performance? It's everything. I mean, I feel like I've performed in both extremes. I've performed in front of an audience that absolutely did not care about me. And in the beginning, I was like, <laughs> but then you're like, you know what? I'm going to try and connect with, with everybody here and just and, and do my best. But then it's like when I'm performing for my fans on tour that they're like, they're, you know, I feel so much love from them. And yeah. they're like singing the lyrics and they're crying. And I'm like, everybody here is my family and we are all one. And I love this people. That's so sweet. It's the best. Euphoric. What's the most memorable fan interaction that you've ever had in your life? Ooh, recently um, I, I was in a meet and greet and I was talking to one of my fans. Her name is Steph. Mm -hmm. She was going through a really bad, uh, you know, painful period of anxiety. Sure. And actually at the time I was going through a per really bad period of anxiety too. And we were talking about it and I just remember hugging her and I was crying. And we were like, I just felt really, you know, connected with her. And a few months later she told me that she was doing a lot better and now I'm doing a lot better too. And uh, just having an honest conversation yeah. about that, I just felt like... You know, it's like one of those moments where I was, you know, really connect connecting yeah. with someone. Well, that's really, really sweet. Um, wait, can I show you something really cool? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, come here. Okay. Gryffindor or Slytherin? Gryffindor! And I definitely rig all the Harry Potter quizzes to get Gryffindor, even though I know I'm a Hufflepuff. Okay. Hufflepuffs are good, too. Uh, Rachel or Phoebe? Um, ah! uh, Phoebe. Uh, Selena or Whitney? <laughs> uh... So litany. I don't know. I gotta pick both. <laughs> I heard that you don't curse in front of your audiences. Tell me why. Because my sister's 10 years younger than me and when I started this I was 15 and she was 5 and yeah. you know obviously she's around me when I'm working a lot and singing you that know was singing my songs and I just didn't want to I, I just didn't I don't know I'm just really mindful of uh, of her and therefore like all my my kid audience. It's just a personal choice. I what's, just wanna yeah. What's your favorite curse word anyway? Uh, Okay, what are you going to show me? Do you want to see it? Look, there's koi fish Where? in this pond. Oh, Did you You see them over there? Yeah, right there. Um, did you know that koi fish live to be 200 years old? You are full of trivia. Especially if you feed them. You want to feed them? Oh, my God. This, Here, this is great. This. I've never done this before. Yeah. I'm a master. One, two, three. Fish <laughs> feeder. Uh, eat that fish. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, feeding it. <laughs> okay. Camila, I heard you were really shy as a child. Is oh, this yeah. true? Oh my God, yeah. I would literally, I would cry when people sang happy birthday to me. I was so overwhelmed. I would go to family <laughs> parties and get so overwhelmed that I just started crying. Well, you overcame that pretty well. Well, I still kind of do it, but you know, but it's, uh, I keep it more under control now. What gave, <laughs> but what gave you the courage to sing in spite of, of social anxiety like that? I think it's just because, honestly, it's just what I love to do. 
mm-hmm. most in the world. And I was like, well, if I want to do this, then I need to overcome this. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I feel like I feel like I have. Like, I think that I'm introverted by nature and can still get a little bit shy sometimes. But I think that's normal yep. and something that you could totally, you know, you could totally control. Yeah. Whose work has really, really made a profound impact on you? Ooh, um, Beyonce. I spent the last whole year, before every performance, um, I would listen to Homecoming. And just mm. watching that documentary, it just felt so meaningful and important and connected to yeah. humanity and what's and what's you know what's what's real in the world and i was just really inspired by her strength yeah and um yeah i think that she's incredible do you ever read press about yourself absolutely not no. never i would never nobody could ever make, make me do that why 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 because <laughs> it just hurts it just you know it's it it hurts my soul and i know that if i want to be happy and if i want to be myself and stay like stay true to myself and true to people. I know that I can't read those things about myself because how can it not hurt? Yeah. It would hurt everybody yeah. and anybody. No, it's true. What's the thing that you're most proud of off stage? The thing that I'm most proud of off stage. Yeah. Um, I think that I have a. I think that the most important thing to me is to do the right thing and, and do the good thing. And I feel like I have a good sense of like I think that's the only thing that matters to me in the world, even if I'm unsuccessful and fail at everything if i know that i'm you know tr- treating people the right way and, and doing you know following kind of my 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 morals then i feel yeah i feel so proud of myself as a person now you've spoken directly to dreamers from the stage yeah what's something you want dreamers and immigrants to hear today that you are not alone and that you are supported and and heard and and seen by a lot of people and besides that issue what's a cause that's near and dear to your heart uh the earth and climate change and everything that's going on right now and and just being you know just what what that's yeah. going to do in the future generations Camila please ready Oh my god do you want to have some chamomile relaxing delicious tea Oh my gosh it's so british of you I know You've turned british. Well, actually actually the english breakfast would be the british thing Oh that's right of me but uh chamomile is kind of my favorite not going to lie Okay Oh can... my god What There's ducks over Wait, there and we're going to feed there's them There's a family of ducks Oh my god Okay Oh my gosh Here's the truth right yeah. So I, I I came I came into this house and they were like there's ducks every morning and I've never ever seen them I I have my duck food ready and I've never seen them until today So you're like my good luck charm I'm so lucky Oh my I'm god I'm a lucky duck Oh my god <laughs> We're okay. lucky ducks But we're going to keep answering uh, questions Okay Kicks or heels Uh kicks Smoky eye or pastel palette? Whoa! Oh my god! Oh my god! Thank god I'm not like my grandma who has an actual fear of birds. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! I did not sign up for this. They're Camilla. shy. You want to talk about shy? That they're shy. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, that was really cool though, huh? That was beautiful. It's kind of magical. Okay. We have to get back to the questions. Okay. Oh, sweating. Oh, me too. <laughs> dress or dress or pants? Dress. <laughs> Mini or maxi? Uh, maxi? Okay. Maxi. Leather or lace? Uh, lace. Would you rather swim in a beach or do you imagine yourself skiing in the Alpines? Honestly, no. I'm from Miami and even this being outside fully bundled is too cold for me. All right. Whose fashion advice do you listen to before anyone else? My mom's because she always tells me when I look like a homeless person when I'm leaving the house. And she's like, you cannot do that. <laughs> Who's your favorite designer? Uh, I like Chanel. Which artist's style do you most admire? Uh, Rihanna, and I bet even Rihanna would say Rihanna. All right. Do you have any good luck charms? Eugene Fitzherbert, my dog. Ooh, your dog. Yes. Yeah. What kind of breed of dog is he? Uh, he is a. Okay, here's the truth. He's a Pomeranian, and I usually always, always, always like big dogs, but he kind of won my heart. Can I meet him? Uh, he's not here. He's in Miami. Ah, oh, what a bummer. I know. Now it's a very unique name for a dog. Thanks. And Eugene is named after a Disney character. Yes, uh, ta- the prince from Tangled, whose name is Flynn Rider, but secretly his name is Eugene Fitzherbert, and I always want to name my dogs Disney characters. Thank you for clarifying that. Absolutely. Hey, we should get it's some tea. It's getting cold. Yep. Okay, so besides tea, what other British customs have you become familiar with? Have you ever had uh, a digestive it's no. like a really famous British cookie, and it has chocolate on one side. Okay. It's really good. We're going to have that with our tea right now. Right. You dip it. It melts in your mouth. It's incredible. Also, Cadbury's. Hey, Mama. Chocolates. Oh, um, if you insist. Chocolate buttons are really good. Fish and chips dunked in a lot of vinegar. Right. That's what they don't tell you is that you've got to dunk it in vinegars. Nando's with peri-peri sauce. <sighs> I'm moving here. You are loving it here. I love it. All right, but besides England, oh, um, what, uh, what country has uh, the best cuisine? Um, I think Italy. 
Yeah, I just love to pig out over some Italian food. It's actually one of the most glorious things in the world to me, mm -hmm. personally. And what's on a Camilla Cabello curated menu? Um, I would say breakfast, huge breakfast, mm -hmm. pancakes, chilaquiles, uh, you know, uh, uh, all of that stuff. Lunch, Cuban yep. food, rice, plantains, beans, dinner, huge Italian food, lots of cheese, Mexican, Cuban, Italian, Indian. Those are my favorite foods right now. All right. Now, I notice you're sewing. Yeah, so what? To get it? <laughs> just forget I said, just edit that out. We're not gonna edit that out. Oh, Why are you sewing, Camilla? Um, it's actually movie prep, and you will know when you see it. Is Cinderella sewing in the movie? I won't say anything else. Oh You've already you gotten a lot out of me. You hear that, blogs? You've gotten 73 pieces of information <laughs> out of me. All right, so what are you most excited about in this role? Tell me. That Cinderella inspires me. I love living in her magical world where she believes in dreams and she believes in love and she believes in everything good because I want to be like that. I want to be that as much as I can. What do you most have in common with Cinderella? I think just that. I think that we, we, we want to see the magic in life and, and we will relentlessly keep fighting for, for our, our dreams. I don't think we have enough mom in this episode. Sinu! I agree. What question should I ask your daughter? Sweet mama! Mm. What is your favorite thing about our relationship? Oh, my favorite thing about our relationship is that you're, I mean, she's my best friend. And you are, I always say this, but you're the better half of my brain. And I, I just feel like I want to, if I can get to where you are as a woman, I will be really happy in life because I think that you're so strong and so kind and so grounded in, in what's important and at the same time so like so full of, of hope and I think that you're really magical and um, not to get emo but I will. Uh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, I love you. Love you, bro. That is so sweet. You are definitely sewing that to wipe the tears off of my face. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> What's the biggest lesson that you've learned from your mother? My the biggest lesson, um, I would say, above all, she's always reminded me that we only have one life and that it's your job to fight for your happiness. It's your responsibility to fight for your happiness and nobody and nothing will do that for you. You have to fight for it yourself. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's the biggest lesson. But obviously yeah. I get one every 20 minutes because that's how often I have my nervous breakdowns as a 22-year-old. <sighs> one thing that blows my mind is that you're an international pop star, but you're also one of the most down-to-earth people. Thanks. How, how do you pull that off? I really think I just got lucky with uh, just, I'm surrounded by people that, like I said, just keep me close to what's real. Mm. Uh, and keep me, you know, like the John Mayer song, where the light is. And, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's human sometimes to fall off that path and to, you know, get caught up in things that, that don't matter and aren't real. But what's real is really love and, um, and, and doing and, and being good to people. And that's very simple. And I think that the people around me constantly remind me that and are, and are keeping me uh, in that direction and, and make me motivated to stay in that, in that direction. And a few of your music videos have over a billion views. That's one seventh of the planet. That's so how, weird and how crazy. How does it make you feel? How does it make you feel when you look at these view counts? It's weird. I mean, it's crazy because I just think of myself as a little girl and I would never picture me being able to do something like that. So it just goes to show you, shy kids, you can do anything. You hear that, shy kids? Yes. Okay, now, your upbringing. You split your time between Cuba and Mexico City. Yeah. How did you feel about moving back and forth so much growing up? Um, well, I don't remember because I was so young, but I asked my mom this the other day and she was like, yeah, I remember you feeling sad because you would be surrounded by a group of people in Cuba and then we would have to leave to Mexico and you wouldn't see them again. So mm. I imagine that it was kind of kind of hard for me, but yeah, but I don't really remember. ¿Cuál es la cosa más cubana de ti? Wow, Spanish. Yeah. yeah, you like that. Very impressive. La cosa más cubana de mí es que soy muy cariñosa, muy encimosa. Mm. Very like a koala. I want to cuddle things. Entonces, ¿cuál es la cosa más mexicana de ti? La cosa más mexicana de mí, uh, mi sentido del humor. Uh, last question. Question number 73. <gasps> I'm so sorry, this is breaking mi corazón. It's, we're breaking mi, mi corazón, corazón también. All right, last question. Yeah. What are the chances of me getting a cameo in Cinderella? Mm, Prince Charming, what do you think? I, oh. I, know, I wish hey. I could do that for you, man. I wish I could. Okay. But you know what I can do? Yeah. 
I could take you on the ducks are back. <gasps> I could take you um I could take you on the set of Cinderella and we could see the ducks before we go. Okay, off to see the ducks. Let's go. Let's go. I'll bring the sew. Yes. Sew and go. Off we go. Off we go, so. And you know, 